Well, Prenhanda, Bao Kroisto to the first of our Lovely. monthly. Hello, Can Minister. You Can you hear good. us as well? Kroisto, Minister, thank you for joining us. Welcome, Bao. It's good to be here. No, we're really pleased that uh, you are here. And uh, as I was saying, Prenhan Darbaub and I Kroiso, welcome to the first of our monthly webinar series, Evolving Together, the Journey Towards Anti-Racist Wales by 2030. Um, I'm Rajvi Glassbrook. I'm a member of the Anti-Racist Wales Action Plan Implementation Team and very, very proud and pleased to be here for what will be a very important channel for our plan, uh, we hope. Some very basic housekeeping, uh, recording and transcription are on um, and your cameras and microphones have been turned off. However, you do have the option of sending us your questions and you may send your questions in Welsh and we will respond in Welsh um, accordingly. Um, since this webinar is the introduction, we sadly won't have sufficient time to answer the questions meaningfully within the session but we'll collate um, all those responses, as I say, and uh, circulate them to all present. Our speakers today have been absolutely instrumental to the shaping and ongoing implementation of our plan. They will shed light on crucial aspects of it and explain the way in which mainly co-production and lived experience are the very heart of both the construction of the plan and, and its transformational purpose. It is a privilege to have the Minister for Social Justice and Chief Whip Jane Hutt here with us to launch this series. The Minister's commitment and support of the plan as a leader deeply committed to social justice and equality in Wales remains hugely valuable to our work. So thank you so much, Minister, for being here today and um, I'll hand over. Uh, Minister, you're on mute. Handa uh, Paub, good afternoon everyone, Dilkan Val, uh, Ravji, and good to see you all. Um, but I think it's also with uh, a great pleasure and a deep sense of purpose that I, I'm joining you today to welcome you to this webinar series, Evolving Together, the Journey Towards Anti-Racist Wells by 2030. Excuse me. It's great to see so many of you join today <clears throat> and as the Minister for Social Justice, I'm dedicated to the principles of equity, inclusion and social justice. And this gathering is a testament to our shared resolve as a government and as a community to confront racial inequality head on, forging a path towards a more equitable and inclusive Wales. Racism, direct or indirect, has no place in Wales. Our ambitious and radical anti-racist Wales Action Plan, crafted through extensive community engagement and co-construction, represents not just words on paper, but a practical roadmap for change. And the anti-racist Wales Action Plan is a transformational roadmap. It signifies our dedication to a Wales where every individual, irrespective of their background, thrives. Our vision is an anti-racist Wales, where everyone's unique contributions are cherished. And this plan, born from the experiences and voices of our communities, is our compass. We aim to make the voices and lived experiences of our Black, Asian and minority ethnic people not only heard, but also acted upon. We're shifting from rhetoric to meaningful action with a commitment to zero tolerance of racial inequality. The global movement for racial justice has stirred change and Wales stands at the forefront. We're leading by example, striving for a just and equitable future. So this webinar series will be a space for robust discussions, learning and sharing best practices. It's a forum for policymakers, community leaders, advocates and citizens to chart progress, embrace change and conquer challenges. And I urge you to engage actively, to question, challenge, and to share your wisdom. Only by working together can we succeed. Fighting racism is our collective duty and requires dedication and continuous effort. But through collaboration, we can make Wales a model of diversity, celebration, and actively tackling racism. So my heartfelt appreciation goes to all of you for joining this vital conversation. 
Thank you also to the implementation team, speakers, and all who are engaging. And together we will turn our vision into reality, making Wales a beacon of anti-racism, a place where everyone feels that they can belong and can thrive. So I now want to hand over to Andrew Goodall, the Permanent Secretary and Champion for this work. Diolchan Bao, Andrew. Uh, uh, um, I just wanted really to add to the Minister's thanks just to say thank you for joining us today as we launch these um, monthly regular webinar uh, sessions um, in respect of the Anti-Racist Wales Action Plan. Um, I guess our intentions are really to help an open discussion amongst ourselves, but really to be focused on the progress and the activities taking place across the Wales. But, you know, like the minister said, I'm really heartened to see such a diverse group uh, from various organisations, um, big and small, people from the general public, as well as colleagues who are working in public services. And I, I think that seems like uh, the basis of a great mix for an open conversation over these forthcoming months. Um, so the Welsh Government's commitment to eradicating racism is embodied in, you know, our ambitious anti-racist Wales action plan. And today, um, you know, having uh, been handed over to by the Minister, I just wanted to focus on what this means for us as leaders and senior managers in the public services. Um, I mean, really, it's to create an environment where we can help each other to deliver the expected progress. Um, but I, I thought I should probably start with me um, just to explain why I'm here. You know, of course, I, I have a role uh, absolutely in leading Welsh Government as the uh, permanent secretary of Welsh Government as an organisation. But I am also the co-chair of the external accountability group, which supports the delivery of the Anti-Racist Wales um, Action Plan. And I would just share that this gives me a great opportunity to hear directly from ethnic minority people about their lived experiences and to contribute how we as a group respond. Um, Irrespective of wherever we are in the plan, you know, we do need to make sure that we can lead uh, the actions and activities, you know, over the forthcoming months and years. Um, but I also wanted to say that I work uh, really closely with Professor Emmanuel Ogbonna, who brings all of his wisdom and understanding of how to tackle racism in different parts of people's lives. And I've been really grateful to the time and the leadership that's been applied uh, by Emmanuel in the development of the initial plan, as well as following through on the accountability group mechanisms as well. And I'm really grateful to him for the partnership that he has created and that he has helped to oversee as well. Um, and just to say that in future seminars, as we break this into kind of the series as offered, you will hear directly from Professor Obana and the great work he is doing within further education, irrespective, of course, uh, that we take advantage of all of that experience in the delivery of the plan in very general terms as well. Um, so, uh, of course, I have an interest in how uh, Welsh Government policy that is decided by ministers is translated across Wales, but I've tried to more uniquely bring our responsibilities as an employer, as an organisation to the fore in respect of how the plan works. So uh, I guess I'm here as the leader of uh, Welsh Government as an organisation, supporting ministers, um, but also trying to make sure that we are ourselves delivering diversity within our civil service workforce. And that's key to create an environment where ethnic minority individuals can, can enter, thrive and really flourish in respect of discharging their roles and responsibilities here. So. Um, I'm committed to seeing proper representation at all levels of the civil service, including, of course, decision making uh, that is so fundamental to the way we act in support of ministers. And this is essential if we are to genuinely achieve a fair and equal Wales. Um, I know that if we want our communities to be part of our organisations, we must ensure that our organisations are welcoming and inclusive. Um, but I hope that our aspiration is clear. We, we aim to be exemplary in policies, practices and leadership, although I would acknowledge that we have a long way to go to truly represent the communities we serve. Um, we often set policy for others in Wales, but in this respect, we are applying it very much to the way we behave as an organisation. Um, but I also wanted to say that our aspiration to be accountable is also very clear and uh, it's really important that we are able to externally demonstrate um, the progress and the activities taking place that do step up and meet the commitment that has been expressed on behalf of Wales. So as an example, to bridge our current gap, we've set really ambitious targets such as our commitment that by 2026, 20% of all of our recruits will come from ethnic minority backgrounds. 
Um, and, and I guess that means that continuing to focus on ensuring that we understand our employees' experiences and we can engage very directly with them to enhance our policies and our processes is, is crucial. Um, we also um, have a broader role across Wales because we do appoint board members to the many boards who manage um, the public organisations that we fund right across Wales. Um, look, and I would just say what is obvious to us with all of the evidence and the practice that we've adopted within the plan, that when we have a more diverse board, the conversations where different lived experiences are brought to the table are, are richer and more reflective of the cultural diversity we see in Wales today. And we want this. Uh, we want it to be consistent, embedded across our different organisations. And we are working really hard to encourage people from all different backgrounds to apply to those roles. We're also setting up regional forums to capture lived experiences from across Wales to widen the dialogue about our plan. So I guess today, supported by the subsequent conversations, is really a call to action for all of us working in public services to collaborate, share experiences and drive meaningful change in the experiences of our black, Asian and minority ethnic communities. The work starts from within and, you know, as the minister was endorsing, together I think we can create a truly diverse and representative government for Wales. And I hope um, as these sessions develop that, you know, you are able to share your thoughts, uh, your progress and your concerns as the series of webinars develop. Um, I think as we've shown through the plan itself in its development, dialogue is a really important way to keep correcting the direction we're travelling in and to improve results. Um, I, I am, uh, with the work that we've done to date, uh, I am incredibly proud that Wales is ahead of the pack and doing something that no other nation has done. And it does feel that the example we are setting is being noticed by other countries. But it's why it's so important that as Welsh Government we can demonstrate that there is progress on the policy expectation, but also that, you know, that visible leadership of us as an employer and an organisation for ourselves is part of the description that we give as we, you know, demonstrate the progress within Wales, but also to those with interest across the world. Um, and I just really uh, wanted to ask you to please stay with this journey, but but genuinely help us to shape a better and more fair, fair Wales. And hopefully um, you'll get some further understanding just from this starting session here today. Um, but really important to hand over to colleagues who are really involved in the, you know, the technical expertise that we receive here. And um, in that re respect, uh, having taken the baton on from the minister, I'm going to now hand you over to our race advisor, Usha Ladwa Thomas. So uh, Usha, over to you, Diohara Thank you very much. Pranam down everybody else, and thank you, Andrew, for that introduction. Um, my role is to really go through with you the sort of part of the journey where we develop the plan. And we call it the plan because it's basically the anti-racist Wales action plan, a short word for it. And noticing who you are in terms of the, the huge audience, we've got 125 people. I noticed there are lots of ordinary citizens as well as people from public services. So my intention is to keep it really simple. So if I'm patronising at times, forgive me, but it's really meant to help you to um, understand the journey without us getting too much into the jargon. Uh, next slide, please, Lauren. So, uh, I mean, just before I start on this slide, one really important thing to say is some, there's something about language, isn't it, that we all struggle with how we should collectively be calling groups of people. And we had a huge journey and a huge consultation around this. And so we will be using the word Black, Asian and minority ethnic and for short ethnic minorities. Um, there was a huge call for all sorts of different uh, terminology, but in the end, that was what was decided by the majority and the steering group that ran it. And that doesn't mean that individually we call people their preferred name or title or ethnic identity they preferred to be called by. So just to get you started on the journey, and I'm going to use the journey for train to explain this, because I think it helps me to think where on the track am I. Um, so the journey really started well before COVID-19, and it started with a lot of uh, hopes to make a, a plan or a strategy around anti-racism or race equality, as it was called then. But it got a bit derailed by the uh, COVID-19 emergency. Um, but in some ways, the, the COVID-19 emergency also highlighted the real need to do this plan we saw that there were huge disparities in how Black, Asian, minority ethnic people were affected by the COVID emergency. Um, and at the same time, we also had the tragic death of George Floyd. 
Um, I guess what George Floyd's death did, um, murder, I guess, <laughs> not death, did was raise the conversation internationally about what racism was. And so everywhere, including in our own offices, we started to talk about white fragility. What does it mean to be white? What does it mean to uh, be a racist? How do we tackle this problem that we forever and ever have been talking, but nothing has ever happened with? So I guess it was an opportunity. So both, both the tragedies actually created an opportunity for us to think differently about how we might do this, um, a new plan or a new strategy. Next, plan, next uh, slide, please, Lauren. So um, I think we stopped at the train and we just took stock and we said, so what is it that people really want from this plan or strategy? We called it a strategy. And the first thing people said from the Black Asian minority ethnic communities is we don't want a strategy. We know how Welsh government does them and puts them on a the shelf and we never see the results of it. But also we don't want to see something that you're going to develop and call it a plan, but then it drops through a gap. Um, we started to refer to it as the implementation gap. And so we started to ask ourselves the question about, so how can we do this differently? Because what we've done in the past seems to produce the same. And so we were really lucky to have the space from the permanent secretary and uh, from the immediate managers for us as a small motivational team to think out of the box and think how we might do it differently. And so we decided that we would do co-production. Um, and although the communities didn't use the word co-production, what they meant was do it with us, not to us. And for us as a jargon, that's co-production. Um, and also we were committed to do it in their own words because it felt like it had to be something that people felt that they owned and they were part of the solution and not just sitting there and knocking Welsh government or public services, but saying, how can we do this jointly? So the journey was going to be together rather than some people being left behind, some on the platform and the Welsh government running ahead. Uh, I hope that sort of explains it simply. Next slide. So um, like any journey, um, you know, the children will always ask, when have we got there? But where, we, where to go? Where did we have to start? Uh, who will steer the train and decide which junctions we will take and routes we'll take and funding we'll do and, um, you know, negotiate with lots of other groups. Um, why, why are we going? You know, uh, it sounds like a silly question to ask, but we needed clarity that we all understood why we were doing this and where we were going and how we are going to get, and how and when we need to get there. Um, also, uh, how do we need to be with each other in on the destination as we're traveling together? And in the end, how might we celebrate? So as I explained, I'm only going to give you part of the journey. So uh, Riaz will tell you the next straight, but let me just take you through some of the rationales of it. So next slide, please, Lauren. So we were really lucky in terms of who was driving the train. We had some really clever, but also very committed people to it. We had the first minister who completely believes in co-production. So he was on it like a hot potato, right? Let's get this going because, you know, co-production is something I really feel would work in this situation. And to have that sort of permission was really, really useful for us as a team. We also had the uh, Jane Hutt of a minister who was a minister on, in a hurry to get this done. And the fact that she kept her pedal on the accelerator and kept on saying, I want reports, I want to know what's happening, I want to know why it's not happening, uh, how much will it cost, what can I do, how can I talk to others? I mean, that constant sort of uh, um, dialogue in our heads from the minister was so useful. She also had a wonderful uh, colleague, you, many of you will know her, um, Uzo Awobi. She was the minister's uh, advisor at that time. And again, she was part of the team in really helping to do have some really difficult conversations. We also were very, very privileged and uh, glad to have Professor Emmanuel Ogbono. And as uh, the permanent secretary explained, he's the co-chair of what is now the external accountability group, but he was also the co-chair of the previous steering group. And what was lovely about that was that Emmanuel brought a, a real insight into what racism was at a very strategic level. But it is, he's also a very, um, good at negotiating difficult conversations, explaining to people what uh, anti-racism means and why it doesn't mean uh, the same as uh, racism or integration. So we, we had a great ally with us and he's staying with us on the route. And then you just heard the permanent secretary, Andrew Goodall. 
Now, I think uh, it might uh, make him blush, but I think I'm really pleased that we've got him there as co-chair as well, because we need somebody from within the civil service who understands how the civil service works and where the attractions are and where the opportunities are and where the barriers are. And that partnership at that high level has been really, really critical to making this plan and the journey easier for all of us to do and to do it differently as well. Can I have the next slide, please? So um, why why go? <laughs> Where and how and when do we need to get there? Um, we thought that the best way to co-produce this was to get a group of um, communities coming and talking. And remember, we did all of this on um, Zoom at that time because we were in COVID mode then. Uh, so we got east of our partners to uh, convene uh, several groups, some with young people, some with elders, some with uh, mixed groups of people across Wales. And I'll just take you to the journey that I explained to them. So next slide, please. So the journey that um, I suggested that we are taking is that uh, we were in this hut, this building, you know, we use that um, because it applies in any country, I've used this model. Um, and that we are going to launch a boat and we're going to go to a very sunny future in the future. And we need to have a, some sort of vision of where we are going, because if we don't know where we're all going and we all split up in different directions, how are we to know where we're supposed to end up? So the idea was that we needed a vision. Um, so and we agreed that actually asking people to think about beyond 10 years was a bit big ask. So let's go for 10 years. Not that it will be sold by 10 years, but we need to have a direction of travel. And then we agreed that actually we needed to stop and review in about two years time and that we needed a short term plan and we needed it to be iterative. So you will notice that we have said that we will do the next iteration in two years time. People said, but that's too short. And we said, no, because in two years time, we'll have learned such a lot about what works, what doesn't work, how we can modify the actions, how we can modify the way we are thinking, who else we need on the train, who else maybe wants to leave the train and do something different. So really, the idea was that we discussed with the group about what, what might the vision be? You know, what's the long term future? What's um, the short term future? What's the plan that we can immediately put into place? And we also talked to them about, you know, what would make it OK for us to travel together? What would our values be? And we also alerted to them that, you know, if you don't stay together, there will be sharks on the way. <laughs> there will be rocks we'll hit and we need to stay together. But that the real price is that there will be caskets of gold and there will be caskets of help and there will be a wind behind us that will push us forward. So it was another joint interest to do this jointly. Next slide, please. So um, collectively and in their own words, uh, after all the sort of four or so seminars we did, we took some wordings to the steering group and we said, so um, what, what's the purpose? Why are we doing this? And we agreed that we would make a significant change to the lives. That's the reason why we were going to do it, to the lives of Black, Asian and minority ethnic people. And in the consultation that followed, people said, no, this is about being collective. So we added the word collective. And where? Well, an anti-racist Wales by 2030. And again, as I say, it's not to say that we will, we will be anti-racist by 2030, but that's the direction of travel. That's the hope that we'll be getting to it in a big way, take big steps towards it. And how? Uh, we need to do this so that we acknowledge it, that, you know, Black Asian minority people aren't asking for favours. This is about their rights. This is about services they deserve and they can call for and expect without having to Global for it. Um, lived experiences in all the decision making. I mean, throughout this, the journey, we realized that people were really keen to talk about their lived experiences, and that made a huge difference to people in public services to see the rationale for doing what they needed to do. And the final one was about being open and transparent. And, you know, today is a, a good example of it. We want to share all of our journeys and all of our trials and all of our successes by doing things like this seminar so that we're open and transparent. And we'll talk about things that didn't work as well as things that worked. So next slide, please. So um, basically the train was gonna start, uh, we had 14 plus carriages and in the Welsh government, those carriages are basically policy areas. So you've got things like education, you've got health and social care, you've got business, you've got crime and justice and many, many more. They're all in the plan, so you'll know about them. 
Um, but each of the, the carriages are important because although we work in those carriages and you could call us silos, the whole intention of this plan was that we'll be joining up together by having this plan and working in a way that an external group was asking us questions about where the joining up happened. And so whatever happened in social care, did that happen in health? You know, why isn't it happening in health? If something happened good in, uh, um, say, primary schools, why wasn't it happening in higher education? Next slide, please. So um, in terms of co-developing, we used several methods, and one of them was over community mentors, and that really came from an idea by Nishima Begum, who just said, we always go out and talk to people. Why don't we bring them in? <laughs> and they started a journey. So um, we appointed, I think, about 11 community mentors who paired up with other policy areas in each of the carriages, as it were, to bring the lived experiences, not necessarily all the expertise and understanding about racism, but the lived experience of having to be in that particular area of policy, whether it was health or education or whatever. We also did what we call deep dives. So we realized early on that we always get desk research when we are trying to do um, policy. And the desk research was commissioned by uh, Wales Centre for Public Policy. What it really showed to us was there were lots and lots of reports that had never been delivered. And so we said to ourselves, so we're going to use desk research, but is it going to make any difference? How can we do this differently? So we can mean what we call deep dives. So for each topic area, each of the policy areas, we had about two and a half hour sessions where my wonderful boss, Claire Bennett, sat and listened and set the tone for how we were conducting those uh, sessions. And we listened both to the desk research and we also listened to what the community voices had to say, the lived experience had to say. And believe you me, it seems like a simple technique, but it really created a lot of change, particularly when policy leads were having to listen to both the desk research and the lived experience, and then have to rethink what they thought they, they should be doing or could be doing. And again, we'll be doing some evaluation, so later we can share that. So next slide, please. So uh, I'm coming to my end, so you'll be glad to know. Um, so the first bit of the train, the first stretch of it arrived um, in June 2022 when we launched the plan. Um, we did the consultation before Senate's uh, elections and we had to hit a deadline in terms of when we needed to get there. So we did that and we were really pleased that in the programme for government where the uh, cabinet and the new government says what they're going to do about um, different bits of our Welsh government work, they put the priority to the work that we are doing. And that has enabled us to do so much more than perhaps we could have done before. So in a way, there was a real example of how the leadership right from the top to, you know, right at my level, were actually thinking about how important this was and what the lessons were for other oppressions as well. And although I haven't meant intersectionality, what I'd have to say is that we constantly kept an eye on it. So in the plan, you will see that at times we talk about the experience of uh, ethnic minority women or ethnic minority young people, because just because you are of one characteristic doesn't mean that things don't get multiplied. So for young African Caribbean boys, being stopped in search is so many more times more dangerous than for white working class boys. So I think that things like that, that we try to take the complexity on. And the final bit is that I just want to explain the word anti-racism. So we had a huge discussion along the way about whether we talk about race equality, because we actually started off talking about race equality, not anti-racism. And um, what we realized very much in the early journey was that actually race equality and all the thinking around it, which was being equal to people, doing things like recording and reporting, what uh, uh, figures we had or local authorities had or others had around incidences of racism, um, the, the approach to sort of integration, i.e., you know, get uh, Black Asian minority ethnic groups to become like us, the majority, and therefore things will change. Um, I mean, you know, I come from a family of eight and uh, seven of us have changed our names <laughs> to make them more anglicized. And that hasn't really meant any, made any difference to their life chances or their opportunities. Um, they're still seen as ethnic minorities. And then there was a multicultural approach, wasn't it? So that was very much about, well, let's celebrate all the different cultures and traditions and dances and music and things like that. And that will change things. Uh, that didn't work either. And the, the legislation around 
uh, race equality um, fell a bit as well because somehow there wasn't compliance around it. So we particularly, um, Professor Gabono and myself, were having constant conversations about well, actually what do we want to do? What is this plan about? Is it about all those different approaches or is it about actively doing something that if you're not doing something active, then you're not being anti-racist, that you are actually colluding with it. So I've just been sent a, a clip of a little girl who was um, missed out, a black girl in a group of um, prize winners who was missed out when the person was giving them their um, 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 prizes, you know, the thing they wear on the neck. <laughs> and uh, uh, she was missed out. And you can see the agony of the little girl. But what was really tragic was that nobody actually stood up or intervened and say, hey, hang on, you forgot that little girl. And there was no apology afterwards. Now, you know, in terms of anti-racism, if you're anti-racist, then anybody seeing that, the photographer or the other colleagues who were standing there or even the media should have said that's not acceptable. Do something about it. I can go on about it forever, but I'd like to hand you over to Riaz. So can I have my final slide? So um, I'll, I'll hand you over to my colleague, uh, Riaz, who is uh, taking you through the next stretch of the journey. So although we developed the plan, we realized that that wasn't the start of the journey because actually um, the plan is only a plan till you start kicking it off and start making decisions about making the change you want to do. Riaz leads the um, implementation team. He has come from local authority and, oh my God, he's really... Uh, flown with uh, coming into the civil service and and trying to cope with all the different dynamics that are there in terms of working in a big organization and it's made huge improvements so over to you Riaz. Thank you for listening to me Diok. Thank you very much uh, Usha for uh, the presentation. Uh, thank you very much Minister. Thank you very much um, Andrew uh, for providing uh, the background. Um, in terms of the the next stage of the, the journey um, I just wanted to start my presentation um, with the challenges uh, that came to us during the, the co-production of the, the plan. And when we wanted to establish a very strong governance framework um, for the plan to be embedded and for us to achieve the, the, the type of outcomes we really wanted to achieve, um, we wanted to kind of sync uh, the next stage of the journey with the journey you just heard from um, from Usha. So there were a few very specific um, challenges came uh, during the, the co-production of the plan. Um, when we ask uh, people from the Black Asian minority ethnic communities, uh, they were very keen for us to take a very intersectional approach. Um, they were very keen uh, for us to acknowledge racism. Um, and when we're talking about racism, it's about uh, systemic, structural, and institutional racism. Uh, there were doubts uh, around the, the resources and sanctions in USHA. I did mention the implementation gap. Uh, and these were some of the concerns came uh, during the co-production stage directly from our Black, Asian, minority, ethnic communities. And again, uh, at the time, uh, and Usha did mention uh, the public sectors is 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 kind of really good developing uh, plan and strategies. Uh, so in terms of the the community trust, there was a there was a deficit that previously we have developed uh, plans and strategies and uh, kind of promise that we will deliver, but then uh, we haven't provided the the uh, the the type of resources that required or the sanctions in terms of the, the accountability which is required if we fail to uh, to deliver whatever we need to deliver. So the first thing we have done, Lauren, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, the first thing we have done in terms of the, the kind of community trust deficit, we wanted to give a very clear message to our Black, Asian, minority, ethnic communities that we are very serious this time. The work we will be doing is completely different than the work we have done previously. So the first thing we done in terms of the implementation in the robust governance structure, which is the accountability system, is that we wanted to have the implementation team in place to give a message that the promise we made to the people, um, we have the resources in place. And that resources is specifically to have the the team to make sure that the goals in actions uh, that we promise 
uh, within the plan is delivered. And there is a team who will make sure that they coordinate with all the policies officials, both internally and externally. And if you see the, the, the team, uh, the kind of the, the expertise and skills we have within the um, within the team, we will be making sure that we have that engagement and we have that uh, kind of external and internal uh, stakeholder um, who have promised to deliver the goals and actions is 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 with us. Um, if we go to the the, the next slide, um, uh, Lauren. Then in terms of the kind of the, the implementation, that's what the kind of the initial um, stage for us to uh, reassure our community that. Uh, the implementation team is in place in uh, August this year. We have the, the the full team who's who's now been uh, been working on the uh, the plan Im implementation. The second stage, which we call it the governance structure, and again, in terms of the governance structure, mean that how we need to be uh, more accountable to the Black Asian minority ethnic communities. And we were very clear from from the outset that if we really wanted to be accountable, we need to have a structure, the structure which is inclusive, but then responsive uh, to whatever we promise within the within the plan. So there are four components of the accountability structure. So the first one we call it the external accountability group, and I will explain that in uh, in, in details that how um, we 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 establish the external accountability group. And then we had the internal support and challenge group, which is specifically. Uh, to the Welsh government, internal uh, to the Welsh government, and then we have the uh, the race forum, which is the four regional forum, and then we have the race disparity unit. So if I kick start with the external accountability group, and again that is the key, uh, and the key is that it's a very unique structure. Um, we never seen the kind of accountability structure previously. Um, in some of the discussion I'm having with colleagues uh, outside of the Welsh government, but in kind of internationally, um, we had meeting the minister and myself. Uh, we had meeting someone came from uh, America and they were very keen to see the kind of the anti-racist wealth action plan, specifically uh, the governance structure that we have established. Uh, we've been in discussion with the Scottish government. Again, they were very interested in our governance structure, did how we established the, the external accountability group. So again, if I take you back to the kind of the train journey. So when we started the journey, there were kind of specific comments came from the Black Asian minority ethnic communities. One is about the resources, but second comment was about the sanctions that how the accountability will look like. So we had all uh, that information in mind and we wanted to establish this new journey. So when we started this new journey, we need to have the, the foundation right and to set the foundation right, um, we had a discussion internally. We involve a number of key stakeholders internally did how the kind of the formation in the membership of the external accountability to look like. And from the top leadership, uh, and you heard from um, Andrew as the, the, the permanent secretary and um, uh, the Minister for Social Justice, they were very keen that if we establishing the external accountability structure, uh, that structure needs to be uh, representative and inclusive uh, of the, the the demographics, but then the lived experience uh, of, of Black Asian minority ethnic communities. Um, so when we started the in the information pack, initially we were looking for experts on anti-racism. So the experts on anti-racism, we were very clear that it's a new area and we will not be able to find people just in Wales. So the limit we, we we kind of extended that we will be recruiting people who have expert expertise on anti-racism across uh, across the UK. Uh, so in terms of our call, we received uh, more than 30 expression of interest, but we were looking just for seven um, independent race experts to join the external accountability group. And the exp expression of interest, the one we received, it was very, very challenging for us to appoint the kind of the people, every single person, they were offering something very unique. But because of the, the membership, the number of the external accountability group, you know, we were uh, limited with numbers. So we have to be very, um, very kind of, you know, picky and choosy in terms of the, 
uh, the people to join the external accountability group. So after a very intensive interview process, uh, extensive process, we recruited the, our experts who now join the external accountability group. And then the people who have um, lived experiences, um, the, the leadership, they were very keen within the Welsh government, especially those who are involved in the co-production stage. Um, in this instruction, we have that if we really want to have the external accountability group, that needs to be representative and inclusive of the, the, the wider demographics of Wales in the geography. So in terms of the, the kind of the group we have in the 11 community representative that now join the external accountability group, they are not just kind of from one uh, particular area. Previously, some of the criticism we received is that whatever we do here in Wales is that's always very Cardiff centric and we really want didn't want to be Cardiff centric or in some cases very much South Wales um, centric. So we wanted to have the kind of Wales wide uh, representation and we, we, we the intention was very much that whatever the membership we have that needs to have that representation, geographic representation across Wales because the experience is in North Wales and the experiences in South Wales is completely different, specifically if you ask people from the Black, Asian, minority ethnic communities. Again, we were very keen that if we really want to bring people, we need to be inclusive in terms of gender, in terms of disabilities. So a very kind of intersectional approach in terms of sexual orientation, uh, in terms of young people. Uh, we wanted the external accountability group to be inclusive of all those key uh, protected characteristics. So if you see the external accountability group in the membership now, we kind of try to be a very exemplar uh, group and that's what kind of the, the group we have. Um, the external accountability group, the they meeting um, on a bi-monthly basis and the overarching purpose of the accountability group is to ensure that progress towards the purpose of the plan, the purpose uh, Usha just explained, uh, is to hold those responsible to account for what they do or they don't deliver. Uh, and again, the responsibilities for ensuring the implementation lies with those policy leads in the wider sectors who are responsible for the goals and actions, uh, goals and actions within the uh, within the plan. Um, again, in terms of the kind of the other structure, which is the internal um, uh, Welsh government support and challenge group, uh, the way we have done it. Uh, again, the overarching purpose uh, of the group is to ensure that there is a timely delivery in progress towards the purpose of the plan. Uh, but again, it's for the policies officials to support a joined up working um, for us to challenge in uh, supporting colleagues to increase the, the impact of the plan and for us to share if there are any good practice in challenges within the uh, within the group. And that is the kind of the, the key purpose of the internal support and challenge group. The membership of the internal support and challenge group is all those policies officials who have responsibilities, accountabilities within the plan and they're meeting on a monthly basis and, and our director for uh, community and tackling poverty is currently chair, uh, chair that group. Uh, our seven um, independent uh, experts, they are also part of the group and the reason uh, for, for us to have that joined up, joined up approach is one for the policies officials to have that direct interaction with our experts, but then for the experts to be aware of the the challenges and for them to provide whatever supports we need to uh, we need to provide. <clears throat> then in terms of the race, the regional forum, again, um, we are now in the process to establish those regional forums. So hopefully in the next few weeks, we will be advertising four positions and there will be four regional forums across Wales. <clears throat> And the idea of those regional forum is one is the external accountability group to hold us to account. But again, it's the people from Black, Asian, minority ethnic communities to hold us to account in those regional forum when they are established. We will be having that discussion with them directly. They will be held us to account that whatever the goals and actions we have within the plans, have we delivered? If we don't deliver, uh, there will be that opportunities for them to ask those questions. And there is disparity unit again, Usha mentioned in terms of the representation that resources was one of the key concerns from the Black Asian minority ethnic communities. And when we were at the time 
uh, asking for information. We were looking for data. There was a significant data gap and the race disparity unit is specifically established to fill that uh, implementation gap in, in terms of the in terms of the the, the data uh, with regards to to race disparity. Um, Lauren, can we move to the next slide, please? In terms of the policy development, again, uh, a number of people they're asking us question that yes, we have the plan, we launched the plan uh, last June, uh, but what happened so far? Um, and again, in terms of the the comms, so uh, one of the the area we we specifically uh, kind of you know focus is around all the policies area, but this a series of webinar in seminar again an opportunity for us to be directly uh, interacting with people from black asian minority ethnic communities but the wider public sectors to come and listen to all those policies area in terms of the progress that we made so again i'm not going to kind of providing you with too much details because of the uh, at the time i'm conscious but the welsh government did recently uh, appointed a professor um, Anton Emmanuel to lead implementing the, the workforce race equality standard uh, for health and social care in Wales. And they are looking at data across the, the whole workforce to measure disparity in the experiences of ethnic minority workforce. And again, he will be very much kind of involved, engaged in some of the people. He's already been spoken in other people. He will be engaging with you very, very shortly. In terms of our education, um, in September uh, last year, uh, Wales became the first part of the UK to make mandatory to teach Black Asian minority ethnic um, history and experiences through a new curriculum for Wales. Again, for higher education, HEFQ, they form the anti-racism network. Uh, and again, they will be publishing the race equality reports. And I'm aware some of the higher education institution, they are currently working uh, the, and of the deadline for them, the 2025, to develop their uh, race equality charter and again uh, addressing the, the, the pay disparities. In terms of the schools, they are focusing on recruiting teachers from ethnic minority communities and incorporating anti-racist practices and providing incentive for ethnic minority teachers. In terms of culture, heritage and sports, last November, the Deputy Minister for Arts and Sports announced 4.5 million over the next three years to support the delivery of uh, the culture, heritage and sports goals in actions in the anti-racist Wales um, action plan. Um, again, in terms of the kind of the small grants, so the small grants now being um, given to a diverse Cymru and they are currently uh, helping us to um, encourage uh, specially group within the Black Asian minority ethnic communities to apply to those grants and then deliver those activities. <clears throat> Again, um, you may have uh, Usha mentioned and Shima Begum, so she's kind of the person, uh, a number of you may be liaising with her directly. In terms of the leadership, Andrew mentioned a few examples, what we kind of doing internally, uh, but during the 2023-2024, uh, all senior leaders in the Welsh government have been asked to have one performance objective related to anti-racism, um, which deliver the outcome, um, <clears throat> which kind of embed the anti-racism in the work, in the leadership of their team uh, in the wider Welsh government. Again, the Welsh government ethnicity uh, pay gap was published recently, uh, especially the, the figure for 31st March 2023 are now available and it's been, uh, been published. In the Welsh government, again, uh, we're finalising uh, the tender to review the Welsh Government HR policies, uh, procedure and practices from entry to exit to ensure that they are explicitly um, anti-racist. Um, can we move to the, the next slide, uh, Lauren? In terms of the kind of the journey ahead, um, we are almost uh, finalising our annual report and the annual report will provide you the full details in terms of the, the policies, the progress being made, but then the challenges we come across and then the kind of the focus we will have between now and June, um, June 2024. Um, again, the 2024-2026, Usha mentioned uh, that uh, the iteration of the new plan, the current goals in action is for the first two years, and we will be looking to review the goals in action for 2024-2026. 
uh, from June onward. And again, we will be very much looking for you to be involved and engaged. And then one other things we have done, we recently established, we call it the, uh, the small subgroup uh, in terms of those policies area where our experts and people with lived experiences directly working with our policies officials, and they will be working to develop and review those new goals and actions. Um, again, we are very clear that the, the future focus of the anti-racist wells action plan, and especially those goals and actions for 2024, will be very much focusing on impact rather than just the kind of the delivery of the plan. Your next slide, please. Um, but again, my final slide is before I say thanks to everyone. Um, this is just the kind of the, the, the introductory um, sessions. We just wanted to provide you with the background that what has happened and what will be happening now. Uh, so there will be from next month, uh, there will be policy specific monthly webinar and those webinar will be one hour. So the first half hour will be very much the progress for each of the policies area. Uh, where you will be informed and then the last half hour will be direct question and answer. So you will be giving, uh, given those opportunities, ask uh, whatever question you want to ask. And again, thank you very much again. Um, over to you, um, uh, Rajvi. Thank you so much, Diok and Valryas, for a really, really clear overview of what has been a very, very complex um, forming of a plan. Uh, Diokhanvar, also to Usha for your um, excellent um, sort of summary of the journey and how far we've come, got to go. We hope you found that really helpful because I think it was an optimistic and transparent, clear introduction to our plan, which is um, as proud of how groundbreaking this is, as a permanent secretary said, as a plan and its vision, as well as the scale of the challenge we've still got ahead of us. Um, a huge Diokhanvar to uh, the minister for uh, or, you know, for an excellent introduction and a launch, as well as to the permanent secretary. We cannot underestimate the vital impact of the extent of high level commitment to the anti-racist wells action plan that's in place. Um, and that's where the sort of real point of optimism that this could be the vehicle for sincere change comes from for us. Our goals and actions as a plan run across all policy areas and we can never lose sight of the compound effect of the intersectional barriers, um, as Usha said. And as we wrap up today's session, the main takeaway for us, um, along with sort of aspiration dialogue and that importance of high level commitment, is that we all have a part uh, to play in an anti-racist Wales that is truly inclusive and representative. Um, our next uh, webinar is on the 23rd of October in 20, uh, 2023, and it will be focused on anti-racism in schools. Those of you in attendance today will be sent the link for the next session um, automatically. But anyone new, you know, please spread the word. And, you know, um, if uh, you need to join, all you'll need to do is fill in a form and return to our mailbox. Uh, many of you, I can see there are some in attendance from schools here, will be aware of Professor Charlotte Williams is a, a Black, Asian, and minority ethnic communities contributions and Kenevin report. That will be one of the key um, aspects of what will be discussed in the next webinar. But above all, we thank you all for attending today. You know, what is the first of what we hope will be many monthly sessions. We can't appreciate your support enough um, because, as I say, we are all responsible uh, to make this plan a success. And um, a huge thank you also to uh, members of our implementation team, uh, Rina Ahmed, Jess Williams and Lauren Fries, um, especially who've done a lion's share of behind the scenes organizing, tech support and moderating of the questions. Um, we have put the questions together and as I say, we will um, send responses that are meaningful um, within the next uh, week or so. Uh, for coming and for your questions. Wishing you all um, a lovely Monday and a week ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you.